A recent event due to its groundbreaking significance has caught the attention of the nation and dominated the headlines. In this film, I intend to discover the secrets and unearth the mystery surrounding the Staffordshire Hoard. I'm going to head over to Birmingham Museum and Arts Gallery where the treasure is actually being displayed. It would be interesting to speak to an expert and hopefully catch a glimpse of the hoard first hand. 81 years ago in Sutton Hoo, 1.5 kilograms of Anglo-Saxon silver and gold was discovered, making it the largest hoard ever recorded. Recently, a local metal detecting enthusiast made the discovery of a lifetime when he unearthed 7.5 kilograms of Anglo-Saxon silver and gold, dating back over 2,000 years. I'm now going to go inside Birmingham Museum to talk to Dr. David Simmons, an expert on the hoard. So we're here at Birmingham Museum today to talk to Dr. David Simmons about the gold hoard. Hello, David. Hello. Um, can you tell me what's included in the hoard? Right, it's a very unusual collection because we've got an almost entirely military hoard. Um, there are none of the kind of female jewels that you'd expect, no dress fittings, nothing of that sort. Predominantly, it's bits stripped from the hilts of swords. It's probably pieces taken from shields. There are fragments of at least two helmets, I would say, and then a great pile of things that we really have no idea what they are at present. So it's a huge amount. A massive hoard. So it's worth 3.3 million? 3.3 million was the Treasure Valuation Committee. How did you go about valuing that? Well, it, it has, once something's been declared treasure, it has to get taken down to the British Museum. And there, there's an independent committee called the Treasure Valuation Committee. Mm -hmm. And their job is to decide what they think the market value of the find is. And they took four independent, um, commissioned four independent valuations from people in the antiquities trade, sat down for a very long meeting with those four valuations and came up with £3,285,000 as the final figure. And that's what the museums had to be raising. It's a huge amount. Very large amount. How the is big, it? Biggest, biggest, fi biggest value of treasure valuation ever made in Britain. Ever made? Ever made. How has this changed our popular perception of Saxons? I think the thing it's probably done is to make people realise that the, the Saxons aren't these sort of hairy barbarians who live in holes in the ground and wear sheepskin. <laughs> uh, anybody who's capable of, of the kind of gold and garnet work that you see mm. when you look at the pieces in the hoard and, and the amazing it's fine incredibly quality, detailed. absolutely astonishing. I mean, some, some of the individual cut garnet pieces that have been mounted into the jewelled mm. the, the sword hilts are, are a meter, oh, sorry, a meter, are a millimeter by a millimeter in size. I mean, they're incredibly tiny, and they're, they're worked into these most intricate patterns. Mm. And I mean, the, the garnets, for example, are almost certainly coming from India or Sri Lanka wow. at this stage. So we're, we're looking at international trade in luxuries that's found its way into a field in Staffordshire. How did it get there? Sixty-four thousand dollar question. I think every archaeologist who's involved in working on the hoard has got their own theory about this. Definitely um, not pirates. Then. Not pirates. I suspect it, we're looking at battle loot. Battle loot. But it's a very specific collection of battle loot. Mm -hmm. um, I was saying we've, we've got a lot of pieces taken from the hilts of swords. What we don't have are the, are, the, are the sword blades. They're not there. They never have been there. It's just the decorative pieces from the tops of the swords. It's not a burial because there's no bodies there. It's not a battlefield because there's none of the other equipment you'd expect. There are no iron spearheads, nothing. So there's absolutely no answer for why it was in the middle of it's, a package of field. Well, there are several answers. The trouble <laughs> is deciding what the right answer is going to be. Dr Simmons was then helpful enough to give me a guided tour of the exhibition and talk me through some of the pieces. So this is one of the more important pieces from the hoard. What can you tell us about it? Right, what we've got here is probably an Anglo-Saxon processional cross. Um, if you see the illustration on the back of the case, that was done by one of our technicians here and was designed to show what this thing probably looked like in, in its un unbent and unbattered um, state. And you'll see at the bottom there are these three little holes and that suggests that it, should, it fitted originally on top of a, a pole of some kind. Um, um, it may look out of place in a hoard that I've been saying is, consists predominantly of military things, but in fact it was, it was entirely appropriate in the 7th century if you were a Christian king going into battle to have Christian symbols taken along with your army to show that God was on your side. So that, that we think may, may well explain why it's in the hoard. The hoard has attracted huge numbers of visitors and will continue to do so throughout its stay here in Birmingham. I'm on my way back to Derby after a very successful trip to Birmingham Museum. The interview with Dr David Simmons has given us a real insight into the historical importance of the hall. As we've just heard, Birmingham Museum has managed to raise the funds in order to retain the treasure. Many people have been involved with these efforts, but there's still some way to go in order to keep the treasure there. 
If you'd like to get involved, please visit the Birmingham Museum website on www.bmag.co.uk and follow the links. I'm Melissa Keane reporting on the Staffordshire Horde.